and welcome to Adventures with Yarn. This is my knitting and crochet podcast in which I talk about knitting and crochet. This is for entertainment purposes and um, just to kind of show you what I've been working on with my crafts and uh, how things have been going with that. I hope you guys have all had a very Merry Holidays and Merry Christmas. Um, we still have some more holidays to go. Um, I By the time I post this, um, it'll be New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. We'll start the new year. All right, well, I wanted to show you some things that I finished. Um, oh, first of all, uh, you may have noticed a different background today. Um, I am visiting in-laws in Arkansas. So I am on a Christmas vacation in Arkansas. And it's been very lovely, very relaxing. Uh, I've been getting some awesome crafting time in. Um, I've got my Christmas haul to show you, things that I got for Christmas. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. So, um, I was kind of trying to bust out Christmas presents and getting things done. Um, I did have ambitious hopes and plans as far as getting things done go. Um, and I did not anticipate getting sick like before Christmas, um, a few days before Christmas Eve. So that kind of like slowed me down on things. Um, but this is the latest Graham hat that I made with the Noro yarn. Um, actually, the previous Noro hats that I made were pretty slouchy. They were like super, super slouchy. So I just subtracted like an inch um, when I was knitting the body of this hat and then started the crown decreases. So it's not quite as slouchy. And I feel like this yarn was a little bit different than the other three Noro hats that I made. Um, it turned out a little bit thicker. Um, quite a bit cozier, I felt. But I really liked how it turned out. Worked up nicely. I actually finished this on the plane, um, headed over here to Arkansas so that I could give this away to my sister-in-law. Um, so just finished just in time on that one. Um, another finished object that I have is this crocheted hat. And this, um, sorry, I'm distracted by some deer outside. There's deer outside in the yard. Oh, they're so pretty. Anyways, sorry. Um, so this was using the, um, the variegated yarn that I had. And um, I was really getting down to the wire with productivity as far as making my gifts goes. Um, and I was just knitting my heart out, trying to go as fast as I could while feeling sick and just like, you know, exhausted. Um, I actually had a dear friend of mine message me and she was asking me about help with this design. And it was like a light bulb went off. I was like, oh my gosh, crochet. That's how I'll get my Christmas presents done. I have to crochet the last two hats um, instead of knitting because I'm, I'm much faster at crochet. I think I prefer the look, the finished look of uh, knitted hats, especially with variegated yarn, but I mean, this works out just as well. So this is like super slouchy, kind of like a stocking cap effect. But if you can see, it has these textured bits. And I do believe that this was called a, like something like a slouchy textured beanie. Um, and add a little pom-pom to it, kind of a loose pom-pom. Um, a little bit of color there. I really like these colors. So, um, yeah, my friend was having some issues with these here. This, uh, it has like a front post double crochet, um, alternating with double crochet for two rows. Um, each time it has these textured areas. So I, um, was going to show her like make a little video to send to her and show her and I thought well like I'll just make it and she you know kind of like she was like hey thanks for the help I was like thanks for the pattern like this is great I'm gonna make this I'm gonna whip this up so I did and I also used the other yarn that was similar to this in a different color to make um, a shorter 
beanie for my husband's grandmother. So, and that was crocheted as well. So I was able to finish these. I think if I hadn't crocheted these, I would not have been able to finish the Christmas presents um, and the Christmas crafts that I had in mind. As it was, there was actually one gift that didn't get finished. And it is my Gokstad hat. So, still working on this. I have made some progress. Um, if you can see, this is the sparkly Madeline Tosh plus hollow glitter yarn. And this Gokstad hat has been interesting. Different textures on different side with this cable pattern here. Um, I went down to California to visit my family on the days before Christmas and I was feverishly, quite literally feverishly, working on this hat um, on the drive down and I could just only do so much. But you know, the thing is, this is for my mom and she also crafts. Um, she does a lot of knitting, but mostly a lot of quilting. Um, and the funny thing was that she was still working on my gift. And I don't know if that was just because we both know that each other are crafters um, and we can just kind of have more grace and forgiveness for these things. But we were both working on our gifts for each other at the same time while we were hanging out and neither of us got finished. And so we were both just kind of like, I guess we'll trade, we'll trade in the mail, send it when we're done. So I still need to finish this. Um, I, it, it, the pattern, as I recall, doesn't actually have like crown decreases. It kind of just ties together at the end. So I suppose I could cut off some slouch and just finish it early. But um, for the time being, I think I'll just pick it up in a bit. So those are my finished objects blended into whips, the works in progress. Um, the whip that I'm most excited about is my Christmas Eve cast on and I used a special yarn that I had been super excited about using and it was called Christmas Eve so before I show this to you um, my plan was to make myself some socks and I found a pattern called Petty Harbor and I found some beautiful, beautiful yarn, like I mentioned. So here's what we've got so far. This is the Christmas Eve colorway by Biff Sugar Yarns. It is Superwash Merino Nylon. And I love it. I love it so much. I, it's, I just feel like it is so beautiful. Um, I know that I was contemplating whether or not to make the heels and toes a contrasting color. Um, in the end, I decided I think that I would regret if I didn't use a contrasting color. So this is a mini skein I got on Black Friday from Madeline Tosh. And it is 100% um, merino wool. And the color is called uh, like Nassau Blue. And um, this has been a very interesting adventure, to say the least. Um, so, for one thing, I saw somewhere on the internet that there were these itty bitty tiny circular needles. So these are Chai Goon needles, um, and they are, um, I think they're 2.5 millimeter, which is 1.5 US. And they are tiny. I mean, these things are tiny, but I love that I don't have to use double pointed needles. Um, I don't I don't know if I just have gotten rusty with double pointed needles, because I used to use them a lot, but now they just, they make me nervous. You know, you've got all your pointed ends all over the place. Um, and especially like for a sock where I know it's going to be taking me a little while, I'm going to be doing lots and lots of rounds, um, a circular needle is going to make it go by so, and it does, make it go by so much faster. Um, where my rounds are just, you know, continuous. I'm not having to switch and reposition and turn everything. Um, so I really, really enjoyed using these. At first, 
I was like, what have I got myself into? Like, these are tiny, the yarn is tiny, it's fingering weight yarn. I'm like, how on earth am I gonna do this? But you know what, surprisingly, um, you get used to it pretty fast. And it's been just lovely, it's been really wonderful. So I have the cuff up here. Um, I couldn't tell what size I should use. I mean, this is, this is the second sock I've ever knit. And notice I didn't say the second pair. This is really just the second sock ever that I've knit. Um, and there were three sizes in this pattern. And it called for the circumference of your foot. But the circumference of my foot, I'm like, where, where do you even measure? Like, what part of the foot counts as circumference? And I think the circumference of my foot was nine inches or more, and that called for the size large, but it, it appears to be pretty darn large. Um, but I figure, you know, it'll just be okay. If anything, it'll be a little bit loose, and that would just make an even cozier sock, I figure. I mean, we'll find out later. But it has, uh, the Petty Harbor pattern has this waffle-ish-like texture. Um, that I was drawn to. I thought that maybe I, I, I was a little hesitant with the the color of the yarn, with it having so many speckles and areas. Like you know, would that be hidden in the texture? But actually, it's not. It just it looks gorgeous. And if anything, I mean, the bottom of the sock is going to be in just stockinette, so you can still see how it would look, just um, without a textured pattern just being just stocking it. Um, so the sock, this particular sock also uses a heel flap. Um, I had to find a different tutorial about um, switching yarn to a different color and um, I will link to that. But um, so I used the contrasting color to make this heel flap and then it has a heel turn. Um, let me tell you what, after making this heel flap and heel turn, it basically after making the, the heel of the sock, I feel like invincible. I feel like I could knit anything. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that this is actually coming together. So I knit the little heel turn here, switched back colors. Um, I did get caught up on picking up gusset stitches, which is, um, basically when you're knitting the sock you start these are top-down socks so I knit here knit down to here to where it meets the heel and then you're hit knitting just the heel and the turn and then you have to pick up stitches along the side of the heel flap so that you can they can all kind of come together oh, it's quite an amazing thing <laughs> these socks um, or socks in general, knitted socks in general. Um, I, I had to sort out though and figure out picking up these gusset stitches on the side because I had previously thought picking up stitches was like picking, picking up part of the yarn um, and then knitting that. But actually, and then that kind of like messed things up as far as where my working yarn was and where it was supposed to pick up again. Um, but actually, picking up stitches can also be something else. It can also be just inserting the needle under the stitch under which the, at, at which the stitch is going to be picked up. And then hooking over with your working yarn and bringing the working yarn up. So that makes a stitch rather than... Like when I've made stuffed animals, like if you were gonna add something onto this, like you could pick up the pick up stitches between the bars, like just kind of hook what's already there and then use your working yarn to then knit those stitches. But this was different. So quite an ordeal. So now I'm working on the gusset decreases, kind of and doing the pattern back along the top. Um, so getting into a nice rhythm of it and then I'll be making the foot and the toes. So I will show you more progress with that as it goes along. But these socks are very special because they are made for me and I don't m make very many projects for myself. So, um, and I've been really wanting to make these, hence why I will be submitting them into the Blame Dunder Knit Along, 
which is um, full of things that you've always meant to vicariously make, um, and just haven't gotten around to, but now you're going to. So now that Christmas is done, I've been working on these, enjoying my vacation, and um, knitting on this sock. It's very, very fun, very lovely. All right, so I think that is it for finished objects and works in progress. So I wanted to show you some of the things I got for Christmas as far as knitting goes. Um, shall we start with the yarn? All right, so I got some Lolo Did It yarn. This is a sock set, low original. Um, I was actually looking on the yarn labels. I couldn't tell exactly um, what type it was. It feels very much probably like a super wash. Um, right away, like looking at the colors right away, I probably wouldn't have pegged these exact two colors as a sock duo. But the more I think about it, the this is this color like this exact color is in this a bit and i think once this actually knits up with the grays and stuff too will be really a really nice contrast so i will look forward to making myself a pair of socks um what i started noticing too is um as i'm knitting the sock that i am currently it looks like the yarn is going to go much farther than just one pair of socks which is awesome, which means it leaves me time and room to make something else with the yarn also. And if that's like a present for someone else for next Christmas, might as well get a head start. So I got this sock duo, very nice, very lovely. Um, this next bit of yarn is also from Lolo Did It. And this is a bit crazy guys. This is Radioactive Zombies. Oh my gosh, I, I felt like I knew that it was gonna sound a bit weird when I asked for this for Christmas, but I saw this on the Lolo Did It website and I was just like, yes, I want those, I want these. Like, it kind of reminds me of my husband, um, my husband's video game Fallout. Um, my husband's, I mean, it's a game that he plays, it's not like it belongs to him, but, he plays the Fallout and there are, you know, it's post-apocalyptic and there are zombies and they're a bit dirty too and, and radioactive. And so when I saw this radioactive zombies, I was like, oh my gosh, I could just see myself wearing these socks while I'm, you know, sitting on the couch crafting and he's over on uh, his side of the couch playing video games. Um, so I asked for this for Christmas, just kind of hoping like if I was really specific, maybe I would get it, maybe not, who knows. But, um, because this color definitely intrigued me, uh, and still does find it very intriguing. Um, and he actually got it, and, uh, when I made my Christmas list, you know, I was only anticipating one skein of yarn, and that's why I just put Radioactive Zombie from Lolo Did It. But he didn't know how much he should buy. He didn't realize, he, he just didn't know. He's like, you know, he was thinking he'd hate to give me, um, you know, one skein if that wasn't enough to make what I wanted to make. Um, and I guess he went back and I think he said, when he went back to the website to just kind of double check, there was only one more left. So he just went ahead and bought it. So I got two and I was, you know, I was, I thought that was so sweet. I don't really need two, but that was so sweet. And then I thought, oh my gosh, I could make us matching socks. I could make us matching radioactive zombie socks to both wear while he plays Fallout. So that is my plan. That's my plan. I'm sticking to it. This is on her dreamy base, is what it's called. It was it looks like. Um, which is a I want to say it's a merino nylon. No, excuse me. Excuse me. It is 70% merino wool, superwash merino, 20% silk, 10% cashmere. Yes. It is really nice. It's going to make really soft zombie socks. So I am stoked about that. Um, I mean, I just can barely get through the sock um, that I'm currently working on so that I can cake this up and see what it looks like. 
So that is that. There um, were several yarns that are coming to me in the mail. Um, uh, I have developed this affinity for Biff Sugar yarn, so I pretty much asked for it for Christmas. Um, it is coming from the UK, so um, it has to go through customs, so there were several balls of yarn that had been delayed, um, and I still haven't got. Um, my husband got me some in a colorway called Nebula, which is like this beautiful purplish kind of galaxy spacey color is what it makes me think of. Um, and then my dad's wife actually bought me some as well, um, um, some mini skeins and some other colors, um, but both of them have been held up. So hopefully they'll come soon and my parents will send them to me. There's also some yarn coming from my grandma who recently took a trip to Ireland and um, it may have been a little forward of me to ask her to get me some yarn while she was there. Um, I did offer to pay her, but then kind of forgot to give her the money to get that. Um, but she says she went ahead and got some and um, wants to gift it to me. So, um, but I just wasn't with traveling. I wasn't able to meet up with her before um, this traveling on this vacation. So I do need to get my hands on some yarn from Ireland as well. So I will be excited to show you that. A couple other things. Um, my husband is really good at getting me presents. We were at a little store in Ashland and I saw these bags and uh, here are these bags. I don't, they're not specifically like meant to be project bags, but when I saw them, I was like, those are cute. I like the size of them. I would use those as project bags. So these bags are, the brand is called Blue Q Bags and they are from 95% recycled materials. Um, very nice and durable and the perfect size. So this is currently my project bag that I'm using um, for the Petty Harbor socks that I'm currently knitting. Get me cake now. Um, and it's got this nice zipper. I mean, it's not like super soft, um, it's squishy, but it's durable and it holds what I need it to hold. I feel that my stuff is protected inside of it. Um, so it's been a really nice traveling around with this over the last couple days. Um, and this one I found was very funny. It says random crap, random crap. And down here because it's from here and there to there and here is what it says down there. And I thought, of course, my husband would probably get me this. Like at home in the living room, I have my kind of area in the living room and I kind of stash the current project materials in that area. And you could refer to it as my craft corner, but my husband so lovingly refers to it as my crap corner. So it was very funny and appropriate that this bag says random crap. So two little project bags there. Um. I've got a knitting coloring book that my husband got for me. Just kind of has some fun, random things about knitting to color. We got the One Skein Wonder book for babies, which is very nice. Um, I specifically asked for this for Christmas. I find it just lovely to, um, make a project using one skein of yarn and it's easier to use things out of my stash that way when you don't have to like go out and buy multiples then I can uh, bust my stash and I love making stuff for babies for other people's babies for a baby I hope to have at some point so there's that um I left some crafting books at home too my sister gave me some really cute um books for making like stuffed animals. Um, I'll have to show you guys that when I get back to Oregon. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think, I feel like there was some more. We'll find out, we'll find out later. Um, this doesn't look related to knitting, but it is. Um, this is for me to use when I knit and other people are trying to watch TV in the dark. And now I can 
do my stuff. I love it. I love it. So, turn those off. There we go. So that will come in handy for sure. Um, my husband got me this. I really like the Pusheen cat. I think it's very cute. This is a Pusheen cross stitch kit. Um, it's just this itty bitty little thing. And it comes with three different patterns. Look at this hoop, it's tiny. And so you can make an itty bitty little Pusheen cross stitch. I don't even know how I'll decide. Probably the, probably the kit with the Pusheen holding a little donut. Let's see if we can find this. It comes with this itty bitty book too, on instructions on how to cross stitch, which takes up like half the little book. And then the patterns, just so cute. There's Pusheen holding a donut with a heart or the whole body shot holding the donut. That would be a hard decision, but oh, it's really cute. Really small, really cute. Just a nice, that'll be a nice little day project. Super cute. So we got that. And I've got this larger project bag. Now this is cool. This is a yarnology bag. So these beautiful, beautiful butterflies. This has more pockets than I can immediately think of what to do with. It has pockets and pouches and zipped up pouches. Um, wow. I think that I may have to use this to hold um, the sweater that I plan on making this year. Very nice squishy, very pretty, lots and lots of room. So that will be very useful. Um, something else that I got for Christmas was a, prescri a prescription, a subscription to something called Darn Good Yarn. It is a subscription box um, full of yarn. Um, so I asked my husband for my Christmas list, I asked to switch from Ipsy, which is a subscription box where they send you um, makeup, little makeup samples each month, to this, the Darn Good Yarn sub box. Um, same price, $10 a month. Um, and what's intriguing about this is that they will send you a small ball of yarn and from what I understand, it's it's super like usually unique, like to kind of expand your experience with different types of yarn. And this yarn, I believe, is like a recycled silk. It's roving um, worsted weight silk, handmade in India. And um, I don't know what I'm gonna make with this. I only just realized, um, as I was opening this, that it does kind of present a little bit of a challenge as far as um, what to make with this as a project, as if this is only the only yarn. I mean, you could certainly add it to another yarn, um, but actually this amount of yarn is 50 grams, um, 75 yards is perfect for like a little baby hat and uh, would give me the experience of using that. I don't know if because this box is like the first box, but it came with another ball of yarn. I, I think that they only, they normally only come with one ball of yarn and like a doodad um, notion or treat, goodie, whatever. Um, so this one came with another recycled silk yarn and needles. Um, if you can see, they are wooden and colored, and we have two size eight knitting needles and a H crochet hook. So very common sizes, most commonly used, at least for me in my crafting world. So those came in it too. 
All right, so that's my haul. That is my Christmas haul, you guys. So I'm very, very stoked uh, to bring in the new year. Um, I am going to be, you know, submitting something in the Blame Dunner Knit Along, which will be my Petty Harbor Socks. Um, I will be working on trying to finish the Make Nine Challenge. Um, nine things that I have planned to make for the year, so I really want to do that. Um, I have another resolution, and it is, uh, it's a bit out there, but for the year 2019, I am going to resolve, yeah, I'm going to resolve to not spend, I said that, to not spend any money on yarn, unless unless I get to go to Rhinebeck. I mean, come on. But that's what I'm gonna try to do. I have a, so much stash. I really do have enough stash to last me comfortably for the whole year, if not comfortably for several years. So I really wanna make a dent on that. And maybe I could try to like organize my stash closet so I can show you it. Um, but that is gonna be my New Year's resolution. No spending yarn, no spending yarn. Now there will be yarn, uh, but no spending money on yarn. So that's not to say I won't receive gifts or like part of my Christmas haul also did include some Hobby Lobby gift cards. So there'll be that. But um, yeah, otherwise I'm not gonna spend any money unless I go to Rhinebeck, which is maybe, it, things are in the works, we'll see, we'll see. But that is my New Year's resolution and I'm sticking to it. I think it can be done and I'm excited to really use up my stash. I have lots of beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yarn to use. Okay, well, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you are new to my channel, I try to post a episode every Monday. Um, and if you like what you see, I invite you to subscribe so that you can keep on following along. Um, and uh, if you were already a subscriber, thank you so much. All right, well, I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely New Year's Eve. Stay safe, have fun knitting. Um, comment below, I'd love to hear what your crafting um, plans are for the new year. All right, thank you so much. I'll